Hey there, welcome to default account structure training. So on this training, I'm gonna be walking through the simplified and advanced account structure docs, explain all the terminology used, and then in the subsequent videos, I will show how to build out the basic structure as well as the advanced. So let's take a look first at the basic structure. So how this structure is outlined is first by type of campaign. So prospecting versus remarketing for the simplified structure. So what prospecting means in this context is anyone who is cold, a cold audience. So haven't been to the website in the last six months and have not purchased from you in the last six months is what we're considering to be a cold prospecting audience. And why six months? Because on the pixel, you can exclude 180 days worth of visitors and purchasers from your site. So you're excluding 180 day website visitors and 180 day purchasers from your prospecting audience. And this is how we're going to measure new customer acquisition. What remarketing is referring to is that these are people who are at the bottom of the funnel. And for the simplified structure, what we're going to focus on for our remarketing campaign is people who have been to the website in the last 30 days, but having yet purchased. So this is the hottest that it gets in terms of remarketing. And we're going to be showing them our different types of ads. Well, I'll typically make ads specifically for prospecting and remarketing. So prospecting will be more um, awareness driven in terms of like letting people know what the product is and more details about the value props we're remarketing. I'm really trying to get into the copy and the creatives of why someone may not have purchased, what's stopping them. I'm trying to address those questions and I'm trying to validate with PR, customer reviews, since they're at the bottom of the funnel. So this is what I mean by prospecting versus remarketing type. Now, campaign name. Prospecting US, prospecting worldwide versus remarketing. So something that I've seen a lot of success with, especially for my e-commerce clients lately, is targeting worldwide campaigns. And so how I have it structured here, if you do have shipping capabilities for worldwide, I would highly recommend testing a worldwide audience since there's cheaper CPMs worldwide and Facebook's really great at finding qualified customers in countries such as Canada, across Europe, Australia, and this can completely open up um, newer, cheaper audiences to prospect. So if you do have shipping capabilities for worldwide, I would definitely separate out your US campaign from your worldwide campaign so that you can accurately measure CPA per campaign. So. Your CPA target, for instance, for worldwide might have to be a bit lower than your US because then you have to factor in shipping costs and your duties that you, you have to pay. Um, it's gonna be different business to business of whether worldwide makes sense and what CPA target would make sense if you are targeting worldwide with the additional costs associated with that. So that's why I like having them in two separate campaigns because I'm gonna measure performance differently. So in my prospecting US campaign, and across all my campaigns, I'm always optimizing for conversions. So always what I want to be like my lowest of the funnel metric is, is conversions. I ultimately want people to convert. So I'm not optimizing for traffic or video views or awareness. Always, always conversions. Except if I'm doing a dynamic product catalog campaign or DPA, dynamic product ads which I have in the advanced structure, and that would be a catalog sales objective. But for the purpose of the basic structure, all you have to worry about is optimizing for conversions. The next step is budget optimization, and this is referring to campaign budget optimization. So what CBO, or campaign budget optimization is, is that it allows Facebook to choose out of all the audiences that you plug into your ad sets, where it's gonna allocate the daily budget. So what you would do is on the campaign level, you say, okay, I'm gonna spend $200 on my US campaign, and then I have maybe five different audiences within that US campaign. Facebook's gonna choose how it allocates that budget to each of those audiences. And then I have a proposed budget split. So and, and last thing on CBO, I use CBO for all my campaigns. I've found much higher results utilizing CBO than not. And you'll see when we go through the structure build that it's just a toggle that you turn on. 
So CBO is really easy to get started on and it's gonna help optimize your performance much better. The next one is campaign budget. So typically I like to recommend to my clients to have a 70-30% split between your top of the funnel prospecting campaigns and your bottom of the funnel for marketing. So 70% is for that new customer acquisition where only 30% of the budget is for those lower level campaigns like retargeting website visitors or existing customers. So I have the budget split on here as a proposed 50-50 split between US and worldwide. However, depending on performance for your particular brand, maybe more budget of that is going towards the US than worldwide, or you have more budget towards your marketing. If you see your marketing as really strong return on ad spend, it's gonna depend. But very typically, I like to keep 70, 30% split. And then when you're setting up your ad sets, you're gonna be asked what pixel event you want optimized for. So some of those options are add to cart, purchasers, view content, I always, always, always optimize for what I ultimately want, which is purchases. So on the ad set level, I'm gonna optimize for purchase pixel event. When I walk through the setup, you can see exactly where that is. Now let's get into audience selection. So this is for my basic structure. I am recommending a 1% lookalike of purchasers. So what a lookalike audience is, is that with your pixel data that you have on your website, so Facebook is collecting all this customer data about who those purchasers are, it's gonna find 1% of the US population that looks most similar to your existing purchasers. And the reason why it's called a 1% is because it's trying to find 1% of the population, so around 2.3 million people in the US who are most similar to your purchasers. Now, they're not your purchasers. That's an important extinction to make. We're not trying to target your purchasers here. This is still a cold audience, but Facebook is finding people who are similar to your purchasers in terms of similar demographic breakdowns, um, shopping behaviors, all that data that Facebook has on its users, it's gonna to use to try to find people who are most similar. So a 1% audience is always gonna be the closest audience to your purchasers, and it's gonna be typically a highly qualified audience in terms of falling in your ideal demographic range. And then secondly, I also recommend to have a broad interest inside of your campaign. And so what a broad interest is, I'm talking about interest that's made up of at least a few million people. So think of like if you're selling makeup, a makeup interest, like things that seem very obvious categories. Or if I'm selling phone cases, and maybe I'm looking at an Apple interest. And what you can do is you can stack multiple similar interests together inside of one ad set. So let's say for a brand, I'm doing dog collars. Maybe in my one ad set, I'm gonna have PetSmart interest, Petco, and Chewy. Put them all inside the same interest until I have an audience of at least a few million people. So the idea is you wanna give Facebook a broad enough audience so that it can find those people who are gonna convert at the lowest cost. And you don't wanna to put too many barriers on the algorithm in order to find your ideal person. So you do wanna leave it relatively broad. And then I'll also show you during the build, you're gonna to wanna to turn on a checkbox that says interest expansion. And what that will do is that even if you pick a few interests, if Facebook thinks that it can find someone to convert under your CPA target, who's gonna convert the lowest cost possible, but maybe they're not qualified inside of that interest. So for that dog leash example, maybe they don't fall into that pet smart category, but maybe they're browsing for dog leashes. And so Facebook's saying like, hey, we should serve your ad to this person, even though they don't fall into this interest. So that's what turning on detail charting expansion does. Okay, moving on. So as you can see here, I have ad set name, typically for my ad set name, which I'll break down more inside of my default ad naming sheet, is I'll put the date, dash, and then whatever the ad set audience is. So it'll be like 1-1 one -one for January 1st, dash 1% look like a purchasers. And then you can see here, these are the audiences that I'm choosing. Oh, so let me first go back to explain 
what WCA 30 is. So I just went over what I would recommend for prospecting. So for prospecting, I would, well, where, where am I? Sorry, it's flipping. Here we are. Prospecting, I'm using 1% look like a purchasers and broad interest. You can do this on both your worldwide campaigns and on your US campaigns. So for your worldwide, in choosing the countries that you're targeting, if you have certain countries that you know you can ship to, you could include them all inside one ad set. Or if you can literally ship everywhere, you can click worldwide and just exclude the US from those ad sets. So typically maybe you can you ship to Canada, Europe, and Australia, have those countries all within one ad set, and you can do a 1% lookalike based off of all those countries. So I'll show you how to do that when we go into our audience building section, but it's really easy. You just create a 1% lookalike of purchasers, and on the ad set level, you choose which countries you want to target. And so for, here we are. For remarketing, what we are going to target is your website traffic from the last 30 days. And I abbreviate this to WCA30. And what WCA stands for is Website Custom Audience. And a website custom audience is built off the pixel. So in our audience building segment, I'll show you how to do this. But what we're going to do is we're going to build an audience of last 30 days of your website viewers. And that's who we're going to target. And then we're going to exclude people who have been to the web, who have purchased on the website in the last 180 days. So just to repeat, for remarketing, we're targeting people who have been to the website in the last 30 days, but have not purchased in the last 180 days. And then for prospecting, we're going to be excluding both WCA 30 and 180 purchasers. So for our quote audience, we don't want anyone that's been to the website the last 30 days or purchased in the last 180 days. And then automatic placements, we wanna let Facebook be able to show our ads on all of the available ad placements that are available, optimizing for conversions, and then you'll have an option to choose your conversion window. Now, even if you have a product that might be more of like an impulse buy, I've seen the best success of just optimizing for seven day click, one day view. So that means that it's gonna show your ads to people who they think are gonna convert within seven days of clicking your ad or one day of viewing your ad. Bid strategy, lowest cost. Now in our advanced training, I'll show you what to do for, um, a, for a cost cap bidding strategy or bid cap. But for the default, we're gonna go with lowest cost bidding, which is essentially telling Facebook that you want to spend your full daily budget each day and that you want to get the lowest cost conversions possible. And then for number of ads per ad set, typically I only have three to five ads on at a time. So if I have a new creative that I'm putting into the ad set, if I have five already running, maybe I'll turn off one or two that are least performing or not getting any spend. And then I'll upload those new creatives in. And then ad types, you can test multiple different ad types here. I just put carousel, video, or static images as two examples. So this was the structure for the simplified. I'm gonna go through next how to build it in the ad account, and then next I'll go over the more advanced structure.